time flies when you're having fun. We are now to our lower limb. Just like we built an upper limb from a one bone that is the most proximal and two long bones that are distal to that, and then a whole bunch of um, wrist and fingers, we have the exact same format in the leg. We've got one giant long bone called the femur. The femur, you can see, where does it articulate? Look at that thing. Are you kidding? And who does, it, who does that attach to? That's the head of the femur, and it attaches to the acetabulum of an oscoxy. The femur, this is a posterior view of the femur. You can see that we have a greater who. You might think that it's like a greater tubercle, and it is, but it's called the greater trochanter. You don't have trochanters anywhere else. But who do you think this little twanger is? That's my lesser trochanter. We have, let's see, on the anterior surface, let's go uh, distal. This is where we're going to articulate with our lower limb bones. We actually have two places. These are called condyles, and these, these are going to articulate with the, uh, speak, tibia in the, in the leg. This is a thigh bone. We're going to do leg bones next. So you have to identify medial and lateral. We would assume, hopefully, that the head is medial, which means that this must be the medial condyle. That's the medial condyle. That must mean this is the lateral condyle. In addition to condyles, places where we articulate, we also have epicondyles, bumps above the condyles. So here we have a medial epi, and here we have a lateral epi. Good, no problem, right? On the anterior surface of the femur, you have kind of a flattened space. I actually just drew the bone that fits into that space. Who is that bone? That's the patella, and that's the patellar surface. Let's do the lower limb bones. This is who we have in the lower limb. We have the tibia. The tibia looks like, like a giant tabletop. And then we have the little fibula. In standard anatomical position, the fibula is lateral and the tibia is medial. The anterior surface of the tibia has this giant bump called the tibial tuberosity. And the distal medial aspect of the tibia has this giant bump that you could just reach down and palpate right now. It's like your ankle bone. It's called the medial malleolus. The fibula has a giant bump called the lateral malleolus. And both of those together are your ankle bones. You can feel them pooching out there because bones pooch all the time, right? The head of the fibula is proximal and it actually forms a joint with the tibia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shall we look at the foot and the ankle? We're looking down on the foot. We have exactly the same architecture. This time, we're going to identify the heel bone. The heel bone is the calcaneus, and that's what you can, if you duck walk, you are walking on your calcaneus. We're also going to identify the bone that forms a joint with the tibia, and that's the talus. So the fact that you can do this kind of movement with your foot 
That's because of the joint between the tibia and the talus. Here, both of those are tarsals. We could name all our other tarsals, and we're just not going to, but we could. Then, just like in the hand, we have metatarsals. And then, just like we had in the fingers, we have phalanges. That says phalange. Oh, my gosh. Bone lab. Seriously, are we done? Do you love Bone Lab? Okay. I'll tell you right now that this Bone Lab lecture was like a half an hour, 30 minutes shorter than it's been in the past. You're welcome. All right. I'll see you in lab when you can play with the specimens. You will be happy to do that. Bye-bye.